Friends, hello, welcome back. Happy MLB The Show release week here. Now, we're on Xbox. We played on previous years on PlayStation. Finally get to stay on Xbox. So, pretty pumped about that one this year. Might get some long-term MLB The Show going. But in today's video, we're just going to go out and try to do our best to explain to you guys a lot of the basic things into understanding how to maximize your coin balance in MLB the stub balance I'm going to say it wrong out every freaking time I promise you I will call it coins instead of stubs at least 90% of the time force of habit I apologize we'll do our best to get used to calling it stubs our stub balance because things are a little bit different if you haven't played MLB the show on X or PlayStation before and this is your first time. Or maybe you're completely new on PlayStation. First and foremost, we're in the collections. Now, this is something to bring up to all PlayStation or MLB the show owners if you played on PlayStation or Xbox in the past. Really here is you used to be able to collect your items. They would go to the no sell, little no sell icon you got there. You're no longer able to sell them but you could quick sell them. So when you did a team collection, if you bought all these players for under quick sell, you could just go ahead, go to the, um, you know, when he's unsellables, actually a way to make coins. You could buy them for 15 subs, quick sell them for 25. But now when you go to the quick sell items selection, you click, click quick sell one, it says nothing to quick sell. So that is a little change this year. I'm pretty sure, unless I'm understanding that wrong and there's gonna be an update. But in previous years, you could click on a player and you could quick sell them just like that. Now I think you can only quick sell them if you own the player quick sell one. It's gonna say uh, quick sell for 25 stuff. Yes, so you're starting to get that. So that is something to keep in mind across the board there. When you're doing collections this year, I'm not gonna tell anybody not to do collections because the rewards are nice. But keep that in mind when you are looking at players that um it's gonna go out and you know not be able to quick sell it down the road. So don't expect that. Like previous years, you could do. I love that. Previous years, you could do like the entire Orioles collection or the entire Mariners or somebody. Yeah, the Mariners would work. This entire collection, you could quick sell everything. You only lose, you know, not even a K. You won't even lose a thousand stubs, and you get the reward with it. This year, not the case there. Another thing, since we're in the inventory, if you are again new to the game, you click view and market here, and it's gonna go bang. Here's your player looking good. Here is the buy and sell order. And here's the way this works. It's confusing if you haven't played the game before. So for sellable, what you're doing is putting in a bid. Say this person's at 72 right now for Drew Staken. I'm gonna put up a name I can actually pronounce. I'm sorry, Drew, we're out of here. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna go to Dylan Moore. We're gonna go to Dylan Moore. So when you look at the sell and buy area, and you'll mess this up, I promise. I think everybody does when they first get the game where they accidentally buy something. But sell means that's what you're willing to place a bid on. Say you want to bid on a player and you say, okay, I think I can get it for 51 subs. You put that 51 stub sell order in, and then if somebody chooses to automatically sell them, like, you know, when you open a pack, it says sell this item for dot, dot, dot. That's usually this number right here on a sellable side. And a lot of people will let you get it. They will instantly sell their players happily for that price. So I always recommend always try to put in that order. Put in it, put in the, uh, you can't put in the cheapest, but put in the highest bid in this case 51 stubs one step higher than 50 to get your player as opposed to the buy side what you do on the buy side is essentially you can just buy it right now you can buy it right now you don't have to wait at all to get the uh, get the card somebody is willing to sell you a dylan moore for 222 stubs right now so if you were to click buy you would get him at 222 stubs instantly but if you're patient you have time you can wait you can put that bid up for 51 stubs and odds are you're going to get that down the road so that's always very nice, I think, there. And it's going to save you a lot of stubs, especially in this game. That's 150 stub difference. It adds up. It adds up very quickly, especially when you're doing collections. That's four players in a collection. So please, please, please try to be patient. When I do collections, what I usually do is I will put a bid in for literally every single player. I'm going to do it wrong right now. Create buy order, right? I think so. I'm so That's the thing. We'll go through it. Create buy order. Hey, it's like the little PlayStation thing. We're going to put it up for 40 stubs because I don't actually want this player, but I'm just using it for an example. Your finalized order, 40 stubs, bang. Yeah, see right there is our 40 that just came in. You click buy and it goes to the sellable side. You click sell, it goes to the own side. Again, it's a little confusing. Just keep that in mind there. Try not to spam A too much or spam X when you're going through your players. But once we did that, Here's the thing, we can click on, um, 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 no, not why, what's the button? Select, where the heck is the button? Why you gotta be changing stuff up like this? I'm gonna show you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Yo, what is, for real, what is the button? What is the button this year? Inbox, it used to be select, right? It was select on PlayStation. I think the thing is PlayStation's got a little bit of a different button mapping setup as well there though. Oh, found it, hello, duh. <laughs> You just hit A, brings it up, buy, sell, my active orders, completed orders. But I wanted to bring it up 
because you see your order is up. This order will stay up for as long as you leave it up. But if somebody outbids you and say you want 40, somebody want 41, all you have to do is go over here and click cancel and place a new order and rebid there. So it's easy stuff. Sometimes you get into a little bidding war with players. But what I like to do is go to one collection, bid on every single player in that collection at once, and then, you know, play a game, come back, stuff will be sold, stuff or stuff will be bought, I should say. Some people overbid you, come back, rebid on that stuff once again if you have to. The other thing to keep in mind is, again, you get the 10% tax in this game. So when you are working the market, I'm a big fan of it. We'll just look at live series. We'll do an entire video regarding the stuff I like to buy and sell. But just in general here, we'll just look at Aaron Judge. You know, 54K to 60K, there is a 10% tax so a 60K player, you're going to lose 6K. So that means if you paid 54K and you try to sell them for 60K, you're going to break even. He's going to be worth 54K. But that is a way a lot of people make coins in this game. You, you look at the spreads like Freddie Freeman, 40K to 47K. That means you sell them for 47K, you're going to lose 4,700 stubs, which means you're still going to make close to 3K there. So it's a good profit. If you can buy and sell them for that price, that's important to remember as well. Another the cool thing about the game, you go to Marketplace and it's going to show you the guy's price history over the you know course of how long he's been out. Also to keep in mind, again, MLB The Show, brand new to the game, trying to do our best here if you're brand new. All these live series players, show you live, live series, live. All these players, there's different series, milestone, live, rookie, everything that's live series dynamic. Their player overalls go up and down throughout the season, so that affects their price. You know, Mike Trout right now, 90, 95, really? 95, uh, maybe they didn't give him a 99 last year either. Uh, actually, I don't think they did. I think they gave him a 93 or 94. But it's important to remember, Jacob DeGrom starts to suck, which is very unlikely because the guy's a stud. But if he were to, that 91 overall might drop down to like an 88 or an 87. And we the show frequently changes the overalls. That stuff affects your overall. So you can look at this game as well when you're buying players as an investment. I like looking at a lot of the gold players, specifically some of the cheap ones that you think have high upside potential that you can put on your team now that you like playing with. Maybe Loriano is that guy. You think, hey, Loriano is going to go play, you know, good, do good this year. He's going to get an upgrade. He's going to instantly go from 2K to at least 5K because quick sell is 5K. So keep that in mind as well. Gold players quick sell for K. Silver quick sell for uh, 100? 100? Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. And then your bronze quick sell for 25. And then diamonds again, 5K. So instantly, if you were to buy like 10 Lorianos and he was to get a diamond upgrade, the worst you could do is quick sell him for more than double what you paid for him. So you win in that category. And normally when they go to a diamond, especially early in the year, their price skyrockets a lot. The better a player does, the more the price goes up. The worse a player does, the more the price goes down. So it's another added aspect that I love about MLB The Show is you get to follow the sport live throughout the year to keep track of your players. And again, hopefully their overalls don't go down for your sake when you're buying these players and it helps you make coins that way. And again, early in the year, always, 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 always check the prices of items we're going to look at other stuff too besides live series stuff but always go and again sell them when you're going through your packs and stuff it's completely worth it i know we touched on a buy and sell stuff earlier and we said make sure you buy the stuff cheap sell it whatever but always make sure because again when you're in your packs and you're opening those packs it's going to tell you hey dj stewart sell now for 114 but guess what you could sell them for double that if you filter through your inventory so always filter through your inventory especially earlier in the year because earlier in the year there's not as many players being released and open because there's you know the game just not been out as long there's still people uh completing the collections the more people that complete the collections the rest less of a reason to buy the players so the price starts to go down as well there but it's just a supply and demand thing right now the demands are really really high especially for a team like the orioles who use collections cheap where you get the player because there ain't any diamonds people try to do that one right away Always look to try to sell these bad boys right off the bat. Very important to do there. Uh, the equipment. The thing about the equipment, it's a lot of offline stuff that it helps for, for the most part there. But people will buy it. People will buy the equipment stuff out the rear end. So again, make sure you're not quick selling that stuff. Sponsorships. I love sponsorships. They're really expensive right now for some reason. Normally, beginning of the year for a game first comes out. And it's one of the things we love talking about. Normally, the sponsorships come out. They're kind of cheap. They're really cheap early in the year where you can get them for the 1K quick sell. And then later in the year, it's almost like an investment as well. Those start to go up a little bit there. Certain ones will start to go up. Like the 20K per home run. Is it 20K per home run? 25K per game. There's certain ones that will go up that are really good. Because again, sponsorships are used for franchise mode offline. People will buy them if it helps them make money in offline. Something like 40K per win is a good one. 30K per stolen base, 5K per run probably won't go for as much. You can already see it fluctuate in the prices, right? The 40K per win, 25K people want to pay for it. Those are starting to go down. Just again, keep that in mind 
You can buy those cheap some for more as well. There's somebody's probably got a monopoly in that bad boy. Actually, looking at that price, what do we got here? That yeah, close, not really. That's a nice sell. Imagine ripping one of those bad boys. So go through your um your, your sponsorships right now. This is a perfect time when you see them going for six, eight, six, fourteen, twenty-two. That's not going to stand. Not for all of these. A lot of these will go down to okay, eighteen hundred stubs. It's just the really good ones, the ones at the highest price. Now those will stick to be again four, five, six, seven k down the road but for the most part this stuff's gonna drop so i'd be selling that right away if i had the chance to right now again if you could pick them up real cheap and sell them back hey be my guest good way to make some coins there stadiums uh unlockables again is what it is a lot of the unlockables are the same story they'll go for the quick sell or you can get them really cheap when you do there's collections for so stuff for collections for unlockables i think there's collections in there a lot of that stuff you have to watch for Look for the quick sell, and a lot of people are willing to sell it for the quick sell. Even cheaper than that this year, though, because you can't re-quick sell them in a collection like you could in previous years. And as always, for that reason, you know, we're not usually big pack advocate buyers, but we did do a pack opening. But, uh, you know, this time of year is the best time to do packs. If you're going to rip packs with coins or whatever, this would be the one time to do it. Because, again, you open this pack 1500 I get it. It's still a pretty pricey pack. But again, you're gonna sell a stadium 36. This player is gonna sell for more than 25. Again, quick sell for five, but it's gonna sell for more 25. Probably get 100 for it. Same with the, again the bronze players. And hey, look at that, Michael Conforto. Sure, sure. All right then. But good example there. All that stuff's worth more now. So your odds of making your coins back or breaking even are so much higher early in the year. That's kind of universal for most ultimate team modes though. But that's gonna wrap up things, I think. I wanna try, I wanna, you know, bore you guys to death forever here, but we're gonna try to go through the collections, find the best ones there, and some of the sets, everything like that. And again, do a market working video here shortly in the future as well. But that's gonna wrap things up for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.